for making the time to do this with us today. First of all, congratulations on winning promotion last season by the championship final with Southampton. Um, just towards the end of the season, there was a run of poor, let's say, poor results. Did you ever feel at any point the wheels were coming off and you weren't quite going to um, Yeah, loads of times. So <laughs> then, uh, then we had a crazy run and then, um, no, I always felt that we, the guys were really capable of doing it. And yeah, it was a tough, uh, you know, it was a really tough week. We lost three games in the bounce, and obviously questions again. And um, then Stoke in the last game of the season, and uh, the club been filmed a documentary. And there's a few fans on there after the game saying how rubbish I was, and we got no chance in the playoffs. So hope, thankfully, we, yes, all right. I think I felt the same. Point. So uh, no, I, I really believe the players and what they do, and, and they really believe that. And, uh, it was a quality job that was wanted for you, so when we say it, can you describe the feelings for yourself and your, and your colleagues on the bench at that moment? Yeah, it, was, uh, it, it wasn't really good actually, we started with Alvin McCarthy and we put his feet, which is really nice because like, the identity of the team is really, um, is really important. So they watched it back this week on the first day, so I think it was important for them to some of the new guys well to understand like, the uh, philosophy of the team really and, and how we want to try and play. And, um, yeah, the feeling is really difficult to articulate and describe. It's, uh, I was actually, it was the first time we had the AR all season, so it was like waiting to see if it was offside or not. Um, but yeah, it was a beautiful feeling, and that launch was amazing. And um, it seems like a long, long time ago now, so we've been, we've been at training a week this week, and now we have to prepare for a completely different challenge. Much like Jimmy Ball, uh, Tom, your season obviously extended beyond the regular season into the playoffs, so you took that little bit less time. To do the usual summer wrestling and the preparation of the finals and the new season. I was supposed to have the numerous contenders, so I've had a lunch of a break over the summer. Um, I had uh, five days away with my kids in Mallorca, which was really nice, and that was it. So after the platform, I was not very well. Um, just the energy was gone, I think, completely knackered after all that. And then I went away for five days and it's been working really hard to try and get the preparation right and the plans and the, the recruitment right for, for this season. A lot of work. All the players get to go away and chill out. And, uh, as a manager, I've worked out very quickly on this side of the fence. It's very, very different this summer break. I think Jimmy Ball sympathised with you from that, that point of view. Um, with it, while the Euros have been going on in the meantime, have you been able to see many of the matches and, and sort of run the ball and the players? Yeah, I've, I've watched a lot. Yeah, yeah. I've really um, I've enjoyed some of it. Some of it is. Uh, been disappointed, but we made it to the uh, final, which is which is amazing. So tomorrow will be good for some kids. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I had a chance to go, but I turned down to them, take all my kids, and they would kill me if I went. So uh, we we'll watch it with them, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. During the course of the whole tournament, are there any particular teams or any particular players that really caught you? I think Spain have been the best team, which worries me, and it's a moment. I enjoy watching them play, but I think that's a surprise to people knowing how I feel about football and the uh, football I enjoy watching. So. I think they've been the best team. I was interested in any Italy flag there. I've got a Italian family, so I was gutted them going out. My son cried his eyes out, so I'm not really happy about that. But um, yeah, I've been, Spain have, for me, been the best team to watch. But I hope they have enough now. I think, I genuinely think England will, will win. But don't quote me on that, it's wrong. I'm just trying to build up some positivity here. Yeah, so coming back to uh, Southampton Football Club and its relationship there since on. Saints have always maintained strong relationships with uh, local number of clubs. How does that benefit you as the first team manager? Well, I think the relationship with Tom is great. We've been, we spent a lot of time in watching the 21s last season. Uh, everyone's so so welcoming, um, really nice people, really good club, perfect uh, for, for our games, and we get good crowds going this year for the 21s. And obviously, um, the women's team play here sometimes as well. So. And then obviously beyond that, the potential for young players to come and experience first team football. And um, I mean, it's really important. Like, for me, I, I started in non-league football. So at Lewis, when I was 16, 17, 18, um, close to Brighton, is where I started to understand the importance of, of uh, non-league football and what it could bring. Um, and like, even that, at Lewis, Solly March playing for Brighton first team now came through there. I always joke he's the second best player to come from Lewis, but he's definitely better than me. So, um, yeah, I think it's really important. It's really, really important. It's uh, nice that we can come down today and hopefully the lads can put on a 
good performance. I don't expect too much because they aren't knackered. They've been running and chasing our lads all week, helping us prepare. So, um, yeah, hopefully not too tired. So the team that the Southampton team is going to be watching today, we made up the run of the under 21s and the national football centre. Yeah, he's mostly under 21s players, but they train with us all the time. So a lot of the guys, probably half the squad, have trained with us this week, um, and then the other half have been trained against us in the opposition uh, for half of the week. And we have some really outstanding players. Um, Tyler Dibbin and Sam Ammo are with us, and so they're not playing today. Um, but Joe Robinson's out there today, we'll marry that in training. Prince is out there, they've been training us regularly quite a bit, Joe O'Brien. So we have some really, really talented guys, really, really talented players. And um, in Rusky as well, Simon Rusk, the 21 coach, just come in with one of the top, top developers, in my opinion, in the country. Done a brilliant job of for a long time in the role. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a really good group of players. And, um, what are you looking for from the players today that might elevate them into your consideration? I think what we ever ask for the players, first team 21s, 18s, all the way down, is to try and be really brave with the ball to run as hard as they can. And that's not easy for them, just had a week of running in pre-season and they're just sort of, but just for commitment really. Whether it's a pre-season game, whether it's a cup final, just the same mentality and the same approach. And then um, the rest will take care of itself. Players at this sort of level, steps one, two, and three in the non league period, have obviously very often experienced professional hand and set up before, and uh, are hoping to get back to that, certainly for those who are young. As a team at the upper end of the football field, do you engage in any sort of scouting activities at this sort of level? Yeah, lots, lots. So, um, yeah. yeah, I think like Nico Lawrence is one of our very talented players. He's uh, just come back from an injury, but he came from non league football. Um, yeah, I think it's really, really important. Like, I've, I've played in the pre season training like this for Wickham against uh, Basingstoke, and a guy called Sergio Torres was playing. He ran rings and mouth around me. We didn't sign him for Wickham, we took my place in the team. We became best mates, and now we're up to his uh, children. But that one game changed his whole life. And he came come over from Argentina to play um, football, ended up at Basingstoke, trying to get into a professional game, one game in pre season. Got him into the game, he ended up playing hundreds and hundreds of games in his career for various teams. Um, so yeah, it can be an amazing, amazing opportunity for the guys. I'm pretty sure they'll be really hungry, and especially against like young Premier League kind of players. I know uh, people are desperate to go and show them. You know, it'd be good for our lads. I hope they get kicked a little bit, not too much, but I hope they get kicked a little bit today. It'll be good for them. It's part of their, their development. So uh, yeah, it'll be good, and hopefully, yeah, some good players in Tottenham side as well. We can keep them. Well, I have my own Dr. Martin. If you want to point out the players who actually want kicked, more than happy to have them. Um, in terms of the Southampton first year, what needs to happen in the 2024-25 20, season in order for you to consider a successful season? Is it just a case of staying in the Premier League or is that oh, we need to, Yeah, we need to stay in the Premier League, but we need to do it in our way. I think we need to make sure we're still in the Premier League and we maintain uh, what we are about and not being like, driven by fear of just staying in the Premier League. We need to try and be a team and be an attack here. I spoke, we spoke a week about that already. That's going to be the head of Newcastle in any game we play is to um, try and be the team we want to be really and not try to be the team we want to be and see how far it takes us because I look at I've been there before as a player and I went there and we attacked it and we were really brave once and it worked very really well and the second time we went with a lot of fear and they changed a lot and it didn't work out quite so well so um, we are going to try and be the same we need to improve in every aspect but I need to help the guys with a few players coming in the building which hopefully will be over the next few days, next week or two, and um, yeah, it's exciting. I think really exciting. We will be the team we want to be, and uh, I really believe if they stay brave, the guys, and everyone sticks together, we'll have a really good chance. Good luck. Season ahead. Thank you very much. Really well. Uh, coming back to the European Championship final spot, where are you planning on? I'm watching at home. Yeah, with my, with my kids and my brother and his kids, and uh, I might get my mum round, but she. Uh, she probably get quite drunk and abusive to the other players, so I don't know, I'm not sure it's a good idea. So she might have to watch it at home, but no, we'll see. I'll, we're just going to watch it with my family and chill out. Like I, uh, yeah, I, I like to watch it at home and relax it and uh, watch it from uh, yeah, a tactical point of view as well, so it'll be good. You've already said you regard Spain as the favourites, but how high do you rate them? Well, I think they have the best players. I think England are the best uh, individual players. I know Spain wings are really outstanding, the young guys, but. Um, I think we have such talent, Foden, Bellingham, um, Saka, and so on, Grace Fingers, Manuel, Declan Rice, so I, um, 
to really exciting England team, and they played up, they played a little bit more free in the semi-finals. Probably their best performance. So they can build on that and go again. It will be difficult against Spain. We have to be a bit patient, but uh, I think it's a great game. It's two contrasting styles, and it might just take one moment of brilliance by England to the finals. If Jude Bellingham didn't pop up that one moment, it's a very, very different story. So. Uh, There'll be fine margins, it'll be tight. I just don't want extra time. I felt like nice and knackered from pre season. So um, hopefully it finishes in normal time, we'll get kids to bed and enjoy it and celebrate. Hopefully everyone gets to stay off work the next day if they win. It'll be lovely. We will be in by the way, we'll be running. But hopefully everyone else gets to stay off. I didn't know this time, you said I was cracking the program for today's game. You're the former Scotland session. Yeah, yeah. What did you make of Scotland's performances? I think the less said about that, the better. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. I love playing for Scotland, but I don't regard myself as, as Scottish. You can cut that out. But, uh, <laughs> actually, the Scottish fans be relieved at that. But, um, yeah, no, I do. I do support them when they play. And we had Stewie there and Shaw there. Um, but yeah, it was obviously it was a bit disappointing for Scotland. And, um, but they got there, which is more than we did when I played for them. So uh, they made big improvements. They got a good squad. Um, but yeah, I've been. I was, I was disappointed. Okay. Um, we've got a few minutes left, so are you happy to take a couple of questions from the Yeah, board? fine, yeah. Okay, would anybody like to uh, ask us any questions? Yes, sir. Just one last thing. Sorry, can you speak up a bit? With Kyle. With Kyle, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I think my like, discussions are ongoing, really, um, and they probably will be for a while. I think he's, uh, he has a great season. He's a really, really brilliant season, Kyle, for me, so... I think you have to be open when the players of the year, last year was contract, you have to be open to every scenario really. Do our best to try and keep him, but at the same time, if we can't keep him, it's not enough, then um, we need to make sure that ideally no one leaves the building at the end of the season for, for nothing. So um, I never think it's the best way when the players have been the last year of contract, which I'm actually involved with fear of injury, the risk of not having a contract in the season. We did it with Stu and Jay last year, and they were amazing. But, uh, but they got better as the season went on, they were more comfortable with their situation. Um, so with Carl, yeah, we're in that position and we'll just have to uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, I'll keep my fingers crossed and still here, but we'll see. Myself and my dad just want to thank you for this season. Thank you very much. the best day of our lives at Wembley. Thank you. We've been to nine away games and didn't lose once. <laughs> We're going to go to Newcastle, so no You can keep coming to the way. I'm just intrigued how important of a role could Ross Stewart play this season. Yeah, Ross is good. He's looking really, really good. Um, he just wants to score. He's got a lot to his game. I think no one's really seen him here yet. So I hope this will be the moment where he can really show what he's got. And um, like a new signing for us, because obviously he wasn't used very much at all. He's come back in a really good place, really good condition. But we also have to be patient and injured for quite some time. So. Um, yeah, I hope he'll have a big part of the I really believe he can. We just need to keep him, keep him fit. Okay, anybody else? Yes, sir, you you yeah. really black It's a brand new question from Arthur. Which is mine. Right. Right. I don't have to get picked, sorry. I've got a dog. He's a Sprocker Spaniel called Barney and he's crazy. So, yeah, that's good. Yes, sir. Hello, Russell. Hello. Um, first of all, thank you for so much. We said to him, believe in your process, start the season you came in, um, you believe for a, for a season, no credit work credit's due, you deliver the goods. Thank you ever so much for that. Um, you've got a history though, without being um, at Swansea, you considered quite a few goals, I think it's about 16 in the first two seasons at Swansea, and last season you considered quite a few goals at Swansea. Mm -hmm. Now coming up to the Premiership, where more demands are higher, and it's a very, very tough thing to come into. How do you counteract to be playing the football you want to see, the football we want to see, but also to keep this defence solid and try to do it? Yes, I think uh, you're spot on. Um, you scored a lot of goals as well. Is it still working? <laughs> Turned it to the right side. Here. You got that? No. It's gone. Oh, shut up, I've got a big voice. Push the red button. Push the red button. <laughs> Oh, well, um, yeah, how do we do that? Well, we looked at it uh, throughout last season and tried to make a change. We made a change towards the end of the season, it went really, really well. So we'll be down to personnel, and now we assess it, now we see it. Um, but we do need to be better at that. I think it's really difficult coming in last year because when you're trying to play in a certain way, you have to prioritise something. I 
and, and that has to be with the ball guys we just wouldn't have been looked at or we wanted to look or we've been anywhere near as dominant as we wanted to be. Um, so we conceded a lot at the start and then we went, we went on a brilliant run and Jan Taylor, the best defensive record in the league during that period. And then we had a wobble where we conceded a lot. Um, and then we had to go back and focus on some real key things again and then the guys were great. So um, there's a few anomalies last year, some big, big results, Leicester Sunday and uh, Leicester again. And uh, that was a problem. So we need to reward that and make sure that doesn't happen. And that's my job. I need to really get better at that, for sure. And it's frustrating because like, the goals we conceded didn't correlate to the goals against the we were expecting to so essentially bench in the league, expected goals against. And that's what happened. Yeah, you can see the goals that you conceded last season were the goals that you conceded last season. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, you can see the goals that you conceded last season were the um, so we've got to look at that all summer. Um, I've lost many, many uh, good sleeps, many sleepless nights thinking about it. It's our job to make sure we, uh, we work on it. I'm confident we do. Yes, Neil. Russell, what team are you most looking forward to playing that next season? Um, I don't know, really. I'm looking forward to, to all of it. I'm really looking forward to all of it. I think, um, yeah, being from, being from Brighton, I'm looking forward to going back there and uh, playing against them and giving loads of stick to my mates in the crowd if we do a big game, it would be nice. But uh, and honestly, I'm genuinely, I'm just excited about all of it. I'm excited about the challenge ahead. Um, I'm sure everyone's got like a favourite ground or whatever they go to, but um, yeah, I'm really just excited about all of it. There's a young lad at the back if you've got questions. Oh, sorry. The young lad in the back. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I think, um, yeah, these things take more time, mate. We have to be patient. I, I, wanted, I wanted him here last week, four weeks ago, five weeks ago. But um, there's always, when uh, someone else is owned by a, a number club, they always, uh, and they're a good player, and they're going to try and keep him. And there's obviously other teams that will be interested in him as well. So, but I hope at some point that we'll show him enough love and show us down enough money. And, uh, then we'll, we'll want to come back. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But hopefully, before the end of the season, he'll be in the Southampton show. If he's not, then I'll find myself to sleep. Young lad in the top of the way shirt, by the way, that's a big cloud. I just think you ran your over outside, didn't I? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was running late. And you got a bad knee, haven't you, as well? Yeah. I think we'll I think we'll be all right. We're going to attack it. We'll see where it goes, and hopefully we'll surprise uh, a few people. I'm pretty sure we'll be written off from the start, so um, we'll see. Sugar, what's going on with them? Well, he's a right back. I hope he's a right back. Otherwise, I'm watching the wrong player. What's going on? What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with him. No. I, honestly, I've seen so many things where like, we've been leaving with a player and um, I've seen it with people with Danny Ings about 10 times, we haven't once, just for therapy, but um, really? yeah, I don't know, so I can't comment until that Samantha players, um, he's a good player, he's a good yeah. player, we'll see. Young lady, you okay? How many fans did you get into the football club? Initially, oh they've made some tweaks. That's a good question. I should know that, Kirsch. 32,000, there you go. Show us 32,000, there you go. Classic. Yeah, that's helpful. Great. Um, yes, gentlemen, in the white jacket here. First off, congratulations, Ross, on the promotion. Thank you. Um, next, do you have a goalkeeper on the horizon, or is there another Ricky Lambert coming? <laughs> <laughs> If Ricky wants to get fit and come out of time, they can stand there and just uh, finish it off for us. But, um, yeah, I think like, we need to add in a few areas, to be honest. So we're, we're looking to strengthen the squad as much as we can within the financial uh, limits that don't put the club under any pressure um, moving forward. So I think it's really important. That's why we all have to do it differently. And we've recruited really well so far, I think. Like, um, on the whole, British players, young, hungry, desperate to be in Southampton. I think that's like really important. We don't just sign players that just want to be in the Premier League and earn lots of money. But I think it's a big risk when you get promoted to the Premier League that, um, it becomes that. So we have signed so far players that are so desperate to be here and want to be part of it. And don't just see it as like the place where they can earn a lot of money or a place that goes to another club. Um, so yeah, there'll be lots of positions we're looking at, lots of players.
guys will add. Hopefully he says that, hopefully. Uh, the last thing that spans what we don't want to see is, is like the last time where we were virtually the youngest side in the Premier League and it didn't hold. Yeah, I think there's balance. So, um, yeah, I think the difference is we're starting young players that play a lot of football in England. A lot of football in England, they understand it. And uh, we signed Adam Millar and William, and the week has made a big difference with his voice on the training pitch, the way he trains, the way he conducts himself, the intensity he trains at. He's going to be a huge help for the group. Um, Charlie Taylor, the same, so experienced in the Premier League. So we balanced Woody and uh, Ronnie, the two, two young outstanding centre halves, we'll take our best. I think we've got three of the best young centre halves in the country. Um, and then balance that with Charlie and Adam. So they will be balanced. We'll sign some experience for sure if you need it. And I'll really value that. I think people can undervalue the experience and how much you can bring. Um, but we will sign some players that are really exciting and moving forward as well. Can you have any uh, experience? Well, we're obviously watching the young and today. Do you have a preference on keeping the young and around the football club or finding that out alone? It really depends on the personality and how close they are to the first team. Physicality of the players, um, level they're going to go at. Uh, we have a lot of chats myself and Andy and Ollie Lancashire and the guys about the players' pathway, and it changes a lot. So um, some people really benefit from going alone and they really progress their career quickly. It has to be the right environment and it has to be the right place. And so, um, is in the now? He is now. Yeah, and Brad's going alone is somewhere that will really suit him <laughs> because we feel it's right for him. Because I love him as a player. But he's played 20 months for a long time now, so I don't think that's really beneficial for him. We don't. We agree. So he's going to a place with a manager I like, a style that's similar to us, because that will really benefit him. But we couldn't just send him anywhere to a team that plays completely differently to us and we put this to his tool. So we have to assess it individually and um, try and make the right call what's best for that, for that player. Okay, so now, sorry, um, now we'd like to move on to doing photographs and Russell's happy to sign autographs for you if you like. Um, ben from Sega Sports Photography. He's here today to do to do photos. You, obviously, you're welcome to take those photos on your phone as well. Just try not to get um, And uh, we'll do that until 10 to 3. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you very much.